in this video, we're gonna talk about how much does Medicaid uh, pay NEMT businesses for transportation? That's what today's video is about. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna share some information. Back, welcome back to the channel. So look, this is the video I, I, I've been wanting to share with people for, for a little while now. So uh, people ask this question, like how do I get my business uh, set up through set up to get paid with Medicaid. How do I partner up with Medicaid? Maybe you're wondering what is Medicaid when it, when it pertains to uh, NEMT, non-emergency medical transportation, or just transportation in general. So if I put it in, in a generic way or a way for everybody to understand, um, Medicaid is used for in this particular instance, right? for uh, elderly people, disabled people, or low income um, people for non-emergency transportation uh, services, right? Or, you know, say NEMT for short, you know, non-emergency non medical transportation is NEMT for short, right? So that's basically um, what the service is used for. Usually it's elderly people, uh, also, it may be uh, disabled people, people that may need wheelchairs or something of uh, 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 special assistance. And also, um, people of low income um, background or demographics, people who do not have driver's license, um, people that just cannot drive or get to the appointments. So this is, this is why it's so important. Um, majority of people cannot drive themselves and may not have reliable transportation. Um, they seem to depend on, you know, some type of service or some type of a company to provide the service so they can get to, to and from wherever they need to go. Because it's not just doctor's appointments or medical appointments. It can be going to the, uh, the local store. It can also be going to um, airports. You know, there's, there's several, there's many different services that we provide as far as transportation uh, providers or owners. You know what I'm saying? So it's just not limited to doctor's appointments. So think about this. If they don't have proper transportation, the very people that depend on them, you know what I'm saying? Basically getting around to these uh, different appointments and things like that. If they don't have a way to get to these appointments, then this might be a disservice to you know our community, meaning that we have elderly people that need to get to certain places, and if they don't have you know the the means to get there, um, it could be a problem. Meaning like they may need to pick pick up prescription from the uh, doctor's office. I mean from the pharmacy. You know what I'm saying? If you if you get what I'm saying, like this particular business or this particular service is imperative as far as um, dealing with Medicaid. So, uh, I guess what I'm going to say is Medicaid is essential. And the reason why you, you, you clicked on this video is you want to know, okay, well, how do uh, I get paid for uh, my transportation business? Okay, so I have a few points. So don't mind me when I'm looking down at the paper. I have a few points that I want to share with you. Uh, how much does Medicaid pay EMT owners? So that varies. So that's that varies state to state, and basically, basically on your business model, you can uh, set up you can set up a base rate or base fee of maybe thirty five dollars or fifty dollars just to start your vehicle up to go. You know what I'm saying? To to take off to go pick this person up, right? And then we're also charging for each additional uh, mileage that you're that you're charging, usually um, in the range of uh, two to four dollars, right, per mile. You know, how, however you structure your business. You know, gas prices fluctuate. So, in the event that gas prices fluctuate, your price is more than likely going to have to fluctuate as well. I'm just giving you a keynote. You know, what I'm saying a key point. You know, what I'm saying we. We do not control what goes on with the uh, economy. And so we have to roll with the punches as business owners. And sometimes, uh, you know, those prices and don't feel a, don't feel that you are needed to be uh, 
obligated to stick at that price, you know? So each state uh, is different, right? As it comes to a payments and requirements right. for NEMT. Mm -hmm. So there's two ways, there's two ways that you can claim um, Medicaid payments. So the first would be, so say for instance, if a state um, report that NMT spending as an administrative expense, so your state, meaning the state of Michigan, Florida, Texas, or whatever, if a state report that the NMT spending as an administrative expense, they'll receive payment, meaning Medicaid, at federal Medicaid medical assistance percentage-wise of 50%. Okay? So... How can I export? If you understand what I'm saying, like say for instance, the uh, I would say the you get a a fee for about a hundred dollars, right? For a particular service. So if it, if it's deemed to be, if the state deems this to be a, a administrative expense, then you get fifty percent of that, right? And then the rest, you know, what I'm saying, you know, as long as you got your books together, you know what I'm talking about. So the second one is, if a state claims the service as a medical assistance payment expense, they will give, uh, this payment will be considered uh, a regular, as a regular payment, meaning that you get 50 to 77% of the base fee. And that was as of 2020, um, pre-COVID. You know, things they have, like I said, each state varies so I want to tell you what's going on in, in Manhattan or Rhode Island or California because I'm not in those states. So that's why it's important for you to always uh, check your state uh, requirements and regulations. So price was vary from one EMT provider to the next. So uh, basically for us, it's going to be $40 to start this particular vehicle up to, to get us to go to any type of appointment. And for you, it might vary. It might be uh, $50, $55 because uh, your cost of expenses are way more than mine. So you just base your your fees on what what's, what's around in your area. Um, trips will almost be covered as long as transportation is uh, necessary, right? And patients didn't have another way to get to their appointment. Like not having driver's license, like I was stating earlier, that's one of the reasons why people may need the service. Um, people are disabled, may need the service because they have no uh, no uh, vehicle or the proper vehicle with the proper accessories uh, to get to these appointments. So this is where you come in at. So say for instance, you have a Dodge uh, Caravan or a, a Chrysler uh, Town and Country, uh, you can attach the uh, wheelchair lift uh, to your particular vehicle. Then this is a special service that you're providing because you are able to you're able to assist a whole di a different demographic of, of clients, which is really important. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's, there's several different, different clients that you can uh, pick up. So this is what uh, I wanted to wanted to bring to you today. So oh yeah. So let's go to uh, brokers, okay? Um, paying for NEMT on a fee for service basis, contracting with managed care plans to provide NEMT services and arranging uh, transportation for brokers, right? So you may not know what a broker is. So a broker is basically, if you watch my live videos on TikTok, a broker is basically the middleman between you and Medicaid. So Medicaid is up here, the broker's right here in the middle, and your company's down here. Medicaid contacts, uh, well, the, the patient contacts their Medicaid and lets them know that they need an appointment somewhere. Medicaid then, in return, contacts the broker, and the broker needs somebody to do the service, which is you. So they'll contract this particular uh, appointment out to you or anybody else that does the NMT services and whoever picks the appointment up. You know what I'm saying? You partner for that particular uh, appointment. So that's basically what um, a broker is. A broker is basically the middleman. The plain and simple, just the easiest way to explain it. Just the middleman. And let me put a disclaimer on this. FYI, we're working with a broker in most states. Most states are broker states. And I'm going to list a few broker states for you. California. Oregon, Arizona, 
Nevada, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Alabama, Mississippi, Ohio, Illinois, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Louisiana. Like, if I can go on and go on and on, if you name a state, just put it in the comments. I'll tell you. Like, the all, majority of all the states, Michigan, guess what? 313734, we are not broker states. But all the rest of them uh, are broker states. And the main brokers that do these types of services for EMT would be VO, MTM, Modif Care, Logistic Care, which is Modif Care now, um, Access to Care. That's just to name a few. That's just to name a few. But those are the main, uh, I would say, the main uh, brokers uh, that handle these type of services in these big, uh, in these big states. So lastly, what I want to talk about is um, scheduling, when you're scheduling the software. So sometimes if you're working with brokers, brokers have their own um, software, um, meaning dispatch software. And if they do not, then there's different software companies out there, such as Route Genie, um, uh, TripSpark, NEMT Dispatch Software, and there's, there's quite a few of them. Um, there's quite a few dispatch softwares out there you, you may be uh, interested in when you build up your, your clientele. So at first, I don't believe that you are uh, um, needed to have these particular uh, services. But if you're working with brokers, it's going to be required. So just know if you are in the broker state, you're going to have to use these uh, uh, scheduling softwares. So hopefully this video served you some purpose today. So uh, this video is just basically giving you a uh, general idea of how to get uh, how do you get paid with um, how do you how much does Medicaid pay in MT business transportation owners? And so just like I said, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a little diagram on this on this uh, particular screen, maybe somewhere around here, so you know a general idea of what it is, basically across the board on how much uh, they charge. Also, there's waiting time. So say for instance, you have a, a doctor's appointment, somebody has a doctor's appointment and they want you to wait. So usually like a rule of thumb is, and if you're waiting between like 30, like, like 30 minutes or something, it's like 15 minutes for that 30 minutes, between 15 to, $15 to $30, you know what I'm saying, per 30 minutes. So there's, there's also incentives for you to doing this business just because your time is valuable and you can, have as many clients as you want, you know what I'm saying, in between that time. So you just want to make sure that your time is accumulated or uh, accounted for. Let me say that. Your time is accounted for when doing this service. So don't forget, I uh, appreciate you watching uh, this video. I just wanted to bring some uh, information to you today. Hopefully uh, so it serves you good. If you have any questions, Put questions in the comments so I can get back to you and we can have a, have a dialogue. So, um, and if you have a you have a topic that you want me to discuss as far as an EMT go, put it down in the, in the, in the comments and I'll get uh, get I'll get to those uh, particular questions and I'll get a video out to you. So, love and light to everybody. I appreciate you uh, tuning into this video and don't forget if you like anything that's uh, pertaining to the EMT business. Check out the uh, video right here, or right here, to take you on your journey. Love and light, say lube, say lube.